Hey everybody, it's Jane Johnston with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun, and I'm here with... Hey everybody, it's Andrew Plank with Royal Page. How is everybody today? Good. Well, we are doing He Said, She Said, They Said, and don't You're forget to tune in every Monday. Pardon? Yes, thank you, and thank you. So actually, I want to just start today's session with just an acknowledgement to my friend Andy Fielding, who passed away on the weekend. He died uh, tragically in an accident in Mexico, and I'm just glad he was with his family, so. Very sorry to hear that. Jane was telling me about Andy before the show, and he sounds like an amazing man and uh, a wonderful person, and uh, I'm sure he'll be really, really missed, so, yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, okay, Jane. Other than that, how was your week? <laughs> Um, good. I mean, I had a Mardi Gras party that I went to on, uh, Saturday night, which was quite fun. It was a Friday night. I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you do night. at a Mardi Gras party? Drink, drink lots of drinks and wear beads? I wore beads and a hat and, um, and I drank, I didn't drink a lot, a lot, but I did walk. Um, no, I got a lift home. I had to walk back to my car the next day. So. <laughs> <laughs> there are good times with good friends, uh, so that was nice. Um, and then, then, of course, busy um, with work, uh, lots of showings, got uh, a, a listing that's been pretty active. We're looking at its offer day today for that. And um, yeah, had an interesting event, first time in my career where we've had, um, I had a set of buyers, they've been looking at a certain price point for a kind, for, for living. I uh, love your mug, Jane. Cheers to my tribe. There you go. Um, so uh, they've been looking sort of townhouse kind of uh, property for quite some time and we weren't finding anything and prices been going up. They actually got together with some friends uh, to purchase a full duplex. So we've um, we've made an offer on a full duplex. And what we did was we they their friends had their own representation as buyer's agent and I was the buyer's agent for my clients. So we we worked cooperatively, but we we each had our own representation. So it was an interesting contract with a lot of disclosures. Um, but we got it under wraps uh, as a backup offer, but still. Uh, I've done that with friends who've purchased together. So they've uh, bought to, so you have to be careful of the ownership that you have and how, if it sells, uh, depending on how the property is set up, how you're going to decide you're going to split up before you even enter into the contract. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we can just dive into this really quickly in case anybody's curious, but, you know, ownership can be tenants in common or joint tenants. And one is, um, you know, hundred percent ownership of the property uh, between all parties. In other words, everyone owns it all. And if one person passes away, um, they, they move off title, but everyone still owns the entire property. Whereas, you can also have a 50% ownership or 25 or 1% ownership in a property. Um, and if you want to sell your 1% ownership, you can do that without everyone else having to sign. Uh, that gets a little more complicated because who wants to buy that? But uh, yes, there's different ways to go about it. And of course, you can buy it under a corporation name and have a shareholders agreement. So there's lots of different avenues for going about it. It's a good option these days uh, and something to talk to your lawyers about and your friends in depth. I call it the prenuptial prenuptial purchase agreement. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> exit strategy. You really need to figure out like how do you buy somebody out if you if this isn't if this situation isn't working out or financially it's time to move on and, and one par party wants to sell and one party doesn't. So yeah, and yeah. often it happens with parents and their kids. Okay, so yeah. let's just go through. Yeah. We're going to go through our market update. Andrew has to leave today at ten forty. So let's the latest. Rock and roll. Here we go. And I'm just going to take off that banner at the back there. All righty. So I'll go through the first part. You can do the second part. So um, actually, it's interesting doing this every month because I get to see the, the juxtaposition of last month versus this month. And it's very similar. So we have uh, new listings, 232, 206 pending. This is great because it means we're not outselling uh, the new listings like we were right. at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. 
We have 17 price decreases. And actually, I realize that when you look at your market watch, you can actually click on price decreases and you can see which are actual ones and which are um, uh, problems with the, the way the, the property oh, was inputted. Right. Somebody sometimes will put a, um, a $300,000 condo up as $3 million and then they need to do an immediate price decrease to correct that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then sold or 240. Those are properties that completed. So they purchased in early January, likely. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you got expired says 21 and three withdrawn on that list. And then we've got. Um, so this week in the Victoria Real Estate Board uh, for the for the full month for the for the beginning of March so far, we've had 143 unconditional net sales. In the full month of March in 2021, we had 1,173. So in a week, I mean, if you project that out, 143, let's round that to 150 times four. Uh, that's about 600, um, 600 unconditional sales if we sort of were on pace. I do expect the pace to speed up, but we really still have low inventory. New listings, 230 so far in the month as compared to 1,419 for the full month of March in 2021. So again, uh, same idea. We're around, again, round figures 250 times four uh, for a 28 day month. Uh, we've got uh, about a thousand listings. So we're again under, under active, although I do expect activity to start to ramp up as we move more and more into spring. So these numbers may not reflect what the end month will be. Um, active listings currently, this is uh, telling is we still have very, very low inventory, 902 versus last March, uh, which was really, really, really low inventory then of 1,310. So um, to bringing you back to the first stats that uh, Jane just mentioned on the other, the first graph, uh, the green new listings, 232 versus 206 pending. There's a difference there, you know, of um, what have we got there? 20, uh, 26. Um, additional yeah. listings over those that went pending last week. So there's in theory, 26 more listings, uh, you know, going on to that active listings uh, measure. <laughs> that was a long explanation, but it's true. And so I would say like, we're at 60% essentially of where we were last year for the, if we were to look at it as a whole month. And I do think that people do go away during March break and then they come back after they've spent time together and then they decide that they're going to um, then uh, move. So I think the market will pick up in April. Yeah, very possible. I got in trouble in um, high school for, you know, in my, in my English classes for run on sentences. Okay. So, so, <laughs> sorry, apologies for running on and on. Okay, let's. Um, let's That's why on. I love you, though, because you know you have a great perspective. Honestly. Okay. And Thank I you. do. I do love you. Feel free to chime in in the comments, folks. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, Andrew. Okay. Uh, total active listings. So this is uh, actually illustrating exactly what Andrew was saying. Like year over year, you can see uh, we are way below normal. So normally we're about 2,200, 2,400, and we're um, just at 900, I would say. Yeah. And again, last year was really low in, in a normal like this. <laughs> okay. Uh, in this graph, <laughs> in this graph, um, in a normal uh, span of years, you would see these humps as the different markets uh, as the spring market ramps up and so forth. They'd be more even across the board. So we would see humps every year. We would see these. these almost two humps. Yeah, you'd almost have two humps. You'll have a spring and a fall. But uh, we're not seeing that the same way anymore. We're, you know, maybe this is the new normal. But um, in a normal, you know, span of years, you'll see the, the humps actually fairly even, fairly consistent. Um, and, and, and you get a pattern that's pretty predictable. Yeah. So, and what he what he's saying actually, you can sort of see here. You have yeah. a hump in the spring, and then you have a hump in the fall. But what happened was the actual number of sales affected that curve. So that's why it looks like this. This right. is the end result. Yeah. This this that was actual. The last graph was actual listings on market, whereas this is the listings coming onto market and the sales happening. And this between the two of them. We'll create that other past graph, but 
this graph really it shows better the you know the, the standard pattern and this is where you're seeing the listings and the sales really coming close together and so what that does is it will really uh, and especially in december that's normal pretty normal for list to sale ratio actually to be one to one but over the past two years we've outsold in december so that's why our inventory is low and then we came in uh, less strong than normal in January, yeah. and we're still below where we normally are in February. I just want to comment on that. Um, you know, usually even sales in December, so on and so forth. Most people, you know, unless they have to sell or not selling in December, they're choosing not to sell. But um, uh, that is because, of course, um, you know, distraction. Christmas distraction yeah and cold and places don't show as well but because the demand has been so high um and also because people um are pretty aware buyers are pretty aware that in the spring there is tends to be a bump in pricing um that that we've seen an extra push in december of of people buying uh, i think that's a little bit abnormal well also i tell people if they're looking for deals really November, anything after October is somebody who's motivated to sell. And so you're yeah. likely, because their motivation is higher, you're likely to get a better deal. And I got, I got a touch base from a realtor in January asking me, how did you get money off on that condo oh. <laughs> in December? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. bought it in December. Right. So was it originally overpriced and you got a, yeah. 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 Cause I, I was going to say, you know, um, in terms of getting a deal in this market and even in December, you might find a more motivated buyer, but if you're competing against, you know, 10 other, sorry, a more motivated seller, but if you're competing against 10 other buyers, you, you're not likely to be finding a deal. Uh, and the, and the selection is more limited, but um, there is still more, there is generally and in a typical year, more opportunity and everyone, and, and every time you, you, you know, in every market, we can sort of suss out stuff, but I just don't, I don't think it's, I'm just finding it's hard to tell people you're going to find a deal in this market. Oh. Well, I agree, but you can get money off. But the, the, the thing is, is that yeah. who's selling in October, November, December, and it's usually people who are, uh, it's estate sales or. Um, Jane, my cat did something. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I can't hear you. Um, oh. Okay, I'll just keep going. You work on it. Ah. Okay, you take over the show for a bit. I'll try to get audio going. The cat was walking on my keyboard. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So if we look at the sales to listing active ratio, so this relates to this uh, graph right here. Just give me a thumbs up when you're back on. Um, uh, what we're seeing here is that there's a peak in March of 2021, and we're getting a similar peak happening here right now. And we're with the list to sale ratio has moved from uh, around 90% up to 120%. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm back now. The cat somehow was walking on my keyboard and changed my speakers to um, to not work. So. <laughs> Okay, so seasonally, we're heading into the same peak as we had last year after uh, what was going on. I mean, we're in a seller's market. A balanced market is down here around 30%, which is where we were just before COVID hit. Uh -huh. And then we've just moved rapidly into sellers and maintained that. Now, I, you know, Jane and I are both on a number of, um, you know, realtor um, message groups and such on social media. And um, these are groups that are only for realtors and realtors, you know, talk about their experiences in the marketplace or what's going on. Or, you know, I've seen a number of questions like, hey, you know, how are your open houses going, guys? Um, are you getting many people through? Uh, what's your expectations? How are offers happening? And this one particular group I'm referring to is a, is a, Vancouver, is a BC wide group. So it has a lot of Vancouver agents. And many of the Vancouver agents actually were reporting that things are a little slower for them. Uh, things have started to, the heat seems to be a little bit off. Um, and so that's interesting. I'm not noticing that to the same degree here in Victoria, but Vancouver is a higher priced marketplace. Well, one of my friends who, who works in Vancouver told me that uh, she always said they're about two weeks ahead of us. So I have found it's a little slower. Um, I'm, I'm also finding 
buyers are working differently. I think everybody's working with a realtor now. There's uh, there are some buyers coming through open houses, but not many. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's because we've been training them to come through the open house over the past few years. Yeah, and over the last the few years. Yeah, there haven't been a lot of open houses to go to, so I don't think that people are actually even aware of that as an option or have found that they, they didn't miss it, perhaps. So the culture maybe has shifted on open houses in general. So one of the, yeah, one of the uh, questions I got last week from one of my buyers is, why do you want to show us a property if we have an open house? And I said, well, if, if uh, first of all, if you like it, I have to go through it anyway but also because i don't want to write an offer without seeing it but also um i want to hear what your feedback is as we go through the property absolutely you know it's just it's just not um i mean sometimes you get the call on tuesday morning on offer day to say hey we went through an open house and we've just now decided we want to write an offer on this place and you know you don't have a chance to see it um that's a possibility but Ideally, we would want to see it with our client. If you go through an open house on your own and you select a place and you're thinking of writing an offer, let your agent know so they can run through it on their own or run through it with you and get get their feedback back to you. And yeah. uh, maybe find some pros or cons that you hadn't considered um, and, and and just get a, a, you know, it's the best chance of, of everybody working well together. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to go through the different uh, types of housing. So just single family homes, you can see we're up around the $1.4 million mark. We hovered around a million for a long time there. And then once yeah. the bubble burst, that was it. Yeah. Once you kind of, there was, the million was a psychological and financial um, block point uh, because of, we've mentioned this before, but CMHC will only the, 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 the uh, mortgage insurers will only loan up to a million for a million dollar purchase, 999,000. So um, that that was a real uh, that was a real peak point for the market for a while. But once that's been passed and surpassed, and people have gotten used to it, it seems like uh, the you know all 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 bets are off. Um, so this is average house sale price uh, in Greater Victoria. Yeah. And I would say the big change happened a year ago, January, 2021. Mm -hmm. Condos are interesting. I have found um, it interesting that buyers are wanting a renovated condo now. Uh, I had a very nice condo for sale, two bedroom, south facing patio uh, and nice big kitchen. And it was a bit of a struggle. I didn't think we were overpriced compared to other homes mm -hmm. um but uh we and we were below what the average was here so we're looking um at an average two years ago of five hundred thousand. now we're moving up around the 675 range so and it looks like it's leveling off and i think that's because a lot of the inventory has uh passed through okay road town houses All right and I, I always like to caution with this one, the, the averages tend to bump around a bit because townhouses, there's such a variety of types of townhouses. And because there's less townhouses in general than there are um, houses or condos, you'll see spikes and, uh, and valleys uh, because the averages skew a little bit. Uh, so sort of you want to mentally, you know, blur this line out and, and flush it out a bit. But uh, it's definitely been on an upward trend for the last number of months. And um, it's townhouses are a great alternative to a single family home. Uh, it's really important to look at uh, the strategist like with buying a condo, but uh, um, they've been kind of, I think, underappreciated for some time until, you know, recently. I think and, also there's more high end ones coming out of the market now. Yeah, there's a high end market for townhouses. There's, I think, I mean, when you think demographics and who's going to be living in Victoria in the future as well. And, um, the, the, the folks who live here that might be having to downsize into a smaller home, the, the townhouse concept is a good one for retirees, especially if you can find a, a single level one or one with a great floor plan. And we, we're, what we're seeing here is a, um, a move from the $600,000 mark two years ago to a bump of seven fifty dollars in May of 2021. And now we're up around the $900,000 mark. And, and I think specifically of the condos around Dieppe, which are... Um, townhouses? Yeah, uh, sorry, townhouses. 
uh, which are around North High Quadra area. So those are kind of typical. They're near the highway and they're very nice, but you know, you are going to get road noise, but still you get your own yard. So uh -huh. there's pros and cons. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, this is a summary I put together. So it was very interesting to me. Um, and I added the peninsula in from last month, but uh, you can see where the hot areas are from this. So uh -huh. Single family homes, these are the benchmark prices. So this is an ideal home. It's not real. We're up uh, over 1.1 million, uh, up 2.2% from last month and up 29% from last year. Want to do the next one? Sure. So that was for um, Victoria, the city of. Now, that's just a small portion of the whole of Greater Victoria. Now, when we look at the core, which is going to be Victoria, uh, Oak Bay, Squimalt, and Saanich. Uh, maybe View Royal, yes. I think yeah. View Royal as well. So that benchmark price is higher than the city of Victoria, um, where you've so a benchmark of one million one hundred ninety-six thousand three hundred, so one point two million. That's up three percent over last month, but only twenty-six percent over last year. Yeah, and then uh, the West Shore. So this is where you're going to see the values. Sorry. <laughs> What? Only? <laughs> Only 26% compared to the 29 for Victoria. Yeah. The West Shore, though, has the biggest increase of 33.2%. So their mm -hmm. current benchmark price is 971. That's up 1% over last month. And that's huge. 33%. Okay. Yeah. Peninsula? Uh, Peninsula is almost at 1.2 million as well. It, pretty much the same as the core in terms of average. And it's been, I think the Peninsula is a great opportunity uh, option for folks who aren't finding product in town if they're willing to go a little further. Um, certainly costs you more than being in the West Shore, uh, but um, it won't have the same kind of development the West Shore is experiencing. So it kind of depends on your priorities. If you want a little quieter, um, go Peninsula. If you want to be in uh, what's going to be, I think, a future center of, of this area, you go to the West Shore. Peninsula 1.2, as I mentioned, is up only 1% over last month, um, but it's up 33.2% as well. Uh, so same as West Shore, quite a, again, tied for the biggest jump. Uh, yeah, and I forgot the plus, but the uh, the also the advantage of the peninsula is you have larger lots than on the West Shore. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. single family homes, oh, sorry, condos in Greater Victoria. So this is the whole, and uh, pardon me while I, um, because this is not making total sense because I was adding uh, rose today. So sorry. So we're at five, the numbers are right though. 597.7. Uh, this is up 3.4% over last month and up 22.6% over last year. And then condos downtown. Yeah. So just to be clear, so if we're talking about, so condos Greater Victoria is the same as um, condos. Oops. Five core. municipalities. Yeah, the core. Okay, so that's Condos Core. Condos Downtown is the same as SFD Victoria. So we're talking about the, uh, the Victoria City. 603,600. It's up 2.8% over last month. It's up 22% over last year, 22.1. And condos on the West Shore, way cheaper at 472,500, up 7.7% 7 .7 over last month and up 27.5% over last year. So um, again, if you're looking for the best deal, the West Shore is the best place to go. One difficulty with this home price index is it does take a benchmark home, and that benchmark home is different depending on the area we're talking about. So the benchmark home in the West Shore could be a one bedroom, one bath, and the, best, the benchmark downtown could be two beds, one bath, or two beds, two baths. It's not necessarily following the same house throughout these different areas. I just want to point that out. Um, so when it's looking for the most typical and it kind of creates a, an artificial home out of that, uh, a, a virtual home and then tracks its value, but it's going to be based on that area. Okay. So, sorry, we were on West shore now, or. I just want to give a good example of that. So mm -hmm. it's rare to find a double car garage downtown, but you are going to find one on the West shore. So this right. is a great example. Okay, yeah. So that benchmark home in the West shore might have a double car garage. Uh, were we on, I'm going to, yeah, Condos West Shore. Uh, no, you just did that, right? So we're on the peninsula. 
Yeah. So Peninsula, 563200 for the benchmark home on the Peninsula. That's up 1.8%, and that's 18.6% up over last year. And in townhomes, 855 in the core uh, for townhomes, uh, up 2.3% and up 24.3% over last year. So again, we're seeing a very consistent increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And West Shore townhouse, uh, 643,300. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, you can have a townhouse, well, a typical townhouse in the West Shore, or you could have, you know, uh, for a little less money, a condo downtown uh, Victoria. I mean, the, the bump is not great uh, to get to. Uh, if you want to move to the West Shore, you get a lot more property uh, or a lot more, you know, home for your buck. Uh, so 643,300 up 1% over last month, 26.8% up over last year. And in the peninsula, and I have been showing a lot out there. That's why I added it in. Townhomes have moved up to 802 thousand up 3.3 percent over last and we're back <laughs> there's a problem with Streamyard, so <laughs> oh you had that too i wasn't sure if it was just me yeah it wasn't it was not my cat this time <laughs> Everything just went dead. So anyway, um, what we were going to say was basically there are four hot areas. So uh, and what we were finding the last slide, what it will say is that we're finding the range actually increasing a bit. So whereas before we had a range of two or three hundred thousand in the different areas of actual and what we were looking at was where the purchase prices were happening. We're seeing it widening a bit. So coming down a bit and going up a little higher. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a, probably indicative of having a little bit more inventory on market. And uh, um, so that there's a wider spectrum of, of properties for people to buy. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I want to just say thank you for being a good friend. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Okay. All right, you guys. So don't forget to join us every Monday. We are here at 10 a.m. on He Said, She Said, They Said. There may be a name change coming. So we'll introduce that when that happens. Um, and your suggestions, and maybe we'll send you a gift card or something if you if we choose your your name. Good right. idea. Like yeah. a topic they want to they want us to discuss. Topics or or name suggestions for our little uh, morning chats here. Okay. Awesome. Great idea. Yeah. All right. So Andrew, how do people reach us? Well, um, they can reach you, Jane, but no, they can reach me at uh, 250-360-6106. Uh, email me info at andrewplank.com. And um, my uh, web address is andrewplank.com. And everyone likes to tell me I'm not as funny as I think I am, but it doesn't matter. I make little jokes for my own pleasure. So, so there you go. I'm not funny. I find you funny. Okay, well, good. Funny, haha. -ha. Okay, and you can reach me. My name is Jane Johnston. My number is 250-744-0775. You can reach me at briarhillgroup at gmail.com. Or you can visit us at briarhillgroup.com. And all of these um, videos are housed at vancouverislandtime.com. And I just want to say, don't forget to subscribe. Boom. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday at 10 a.m. Thanks, everybody. Thank see you. you. See ya. See ya.